Hello everyone, uh, and welcome to another game from round 7 of the 2019 Grand K Chess Classic Tournament. It's Fabiano Caruana, uh, World Chess Championship Challenger, the former one versus Arkady Nidic. And we already seen one game where Carlsen defeated Levon Arnian and again took the lead. Uh, so let's see how this game went. And we do have some nice footage from the Grand K Chess Classic video team. Uh, so let's just check it out before enjoying the game. Uh, here we have uh, nice footage of Nidic uh, pondering on the position. Uh, the camera is a bit uh, going around, but that's that, that's all right, just for us to enjoy. And also we have some nice footage of Caruana. There you have it, chilling in front of some bananas, apples, grapefruits. There's some candy there, some blurry booze in the background. Uh, just some, you know, nice, nice footage. So there you have it. And uh, yeah, let's check out the game. Uh, Caruana has the white pieces and he opens with d4. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, we have knight to f6. Uh, c4 and now e6 and here Karana goes for g3 so we will not be having the queen's gambit decline Karana opts for some cattle and setup uh, we have d5 by black and bishop to g2 and the bishop to b4 check uh, Karana blocks with knight d2 and knight each castles we have knight to f3 and d captures on c4 only now and it uh, this game will follow a game that Karana already played Karana already played this exact same setup uh, in 2009 against the uh, Zoltan Almasi, where uh, that game was drawn, and also in 2010 uh, in Amsterdam, uh, Caruana played it against Boris Gelfand, where Caruana lost this game. Uh, so Nidic came very well prepared. Caruana castles with b5 now, uh, defending the c4 pawn, and now pretty much always if black decides to defend his c4 pawn, you want to attack, uh, attack the uh, base of the pawn chain with a flank pawn. So a4, we have c6 now, defending, and now again b3. Just once again trying to break this uh, pawn structure. Uh, we have c3 now attacking the knight and now knight to b1. And here just bishop to b7 developing and uh, queen to c2 uh, by by Caruana. Uh, and here knight b to d7 was played in that game we mentioned Zoltan Almasi, uh, uh, Fabiano Caruana against Zoltan Almasi uh, that ended in a draw. Uh, but here knight each goes c5. And it's not a new move, it's just a move that Caruana hasn't faced over the board before. Uh, knight captures on c3, now finally grabbing back that uh, pawn that white gambited, c captures on d4 and now knight captures on b5. Uh, we have knight to c6 and now there is one game in the database where bishop to b2 was played, uh, here Caruana goes queen to c4 and it is only now as of move 14 that we have a completely new game. Uh, so okay, you're pressuring the bishop here, if the knight ever moves you could threaten to eliminate the defender of the bishop, so you do have to either move the bishop or defend it. So queen to e7, uh, defending the bishop, developing the queen, also connecting rooks, the, the rooks can now also be developed. Uh, and now we have knight b captures on d4. Uh, and now black could go into some series of trades, but uh, knight each wants to keep everything on the board, he's a very... Uh, creative player, knight to a5, and now queen to b5, and it's an excellent square for the queen, pressuring the bishop, pressuring the knight, pressuring the other bishop, so you don't want the queen to stay there forever. Uh, rook f to d8, knight each develops the rook, and now comes bishop to f4, just a, a nice square for the bishop. And here, bishop to c3, uh, getting the bishop uh, out of this b4 square, attacking the rook, and also pressuring the knight on d4. We have rook a to c1, uh, just getting the rook out of harm's way, threatening to capture the bishop, which would also eliminate the defender of the knight here. So here, knight each has to decide what to do here. It's a, uh, it's a very complicated position, and uh, there is one line which uh, pretty much forces a draw, but it's a really long line, and it's hard to say if knight each considered it. Of course, he has, uh, but maybe he didn't like the outcome of a uh, of a drawish endgame, or or maybe he just uh, didn't feel like calculating all that much. Uh, but there is this line of bishop captures on d4, knight captures on d4, and now bishop captures on g2, where white would have this in between rook to c7, as that's why the bishop is on f4, uh, queen to a3, pressuring the b3 pawn, king captures on g2, rook captures on d4, uh, queen captures on a5, and now queen captures on b3. Uh, rook captures on a7, rook captures, queen captures, and now you can just capture on a4, and you get this endgame where the material on the board is completely equal, white can even go for this tricky rook b1 move, uh, where you can just trade queens, uh, uh, sorry, rook captures on b3, and you get this endgame where material is completely equal, it's a bishop against a knight with rooks on the board, four pawns each, 
it's uh, it's possible. Uh, it's hard to say. If Nairich saw this, maybe he would like uh, this this end game with with the black against Fabiano Corona. Uh, but he decides to keep everything on the board. He plays a6, kicks away the queen, queen to e5, and only now does he go for bishop captures on f3. Uh, we have bishop captures, and now bishop captures on d4. Queen captures on a5, and now knight to d5, uh, preventing this bishop from uh, attacking the rook on a8, and now uh, Corona finds uh, an excellent move, and that is bishop to c7. Uh, just trying to get this rook uh, away from the defense of the knight, then captures. Captures can happen, uh, knight h cannot leave the d-file, he has to keep it there, rook to d7, and now comes e3. Uh, asking what do you want to do with this bishop uh, but it also allows an Eidich to uh, improve his position with queen to f6 which he does now of course he's hoping for captures and captures on f3 uh, but Karana is not interested with bishop captures on d5 uh, rook captures on d5 first this comes with an attack on the queen so you don't have time to grab the bishop here uh, queen to b4 and now comes bishop to b2 uh, getting the rook, uh, bishop out of harm's way attacking the rook on c1 uh, rook to c2, doesn't really matter as the queen guards the bishop for now, but uh, it also means you cannot move the queen for as long as your bishop is on b2. Uh, and now knight h says, let's just go h5. Uh, my plan now is to go h4, h3, play queen f3 and checkmate you uh, on, on the g2 square. Uh, but queen to b7. Corona says, okay, you don't have time for that. I'm just gonna push away your rook. Let's say rook to f8. This was played in the game. Uh, and now just queen captures on a6. With this capture... Uh, Caruana is now up two pawns, and not only that, he has two connected pass pawns on the queen side, and those are very fast, as you all know. Uh, so h4 by Nidich, just uh, trying to, uh, you know, get his plan to, to fulfillment, uh, and queen to c4. Caruana has to keep an eye on the e4 or g4 square to be able to prevent the black queen from reaching the f3 square. Uh, so how do you proceed here? Uh, Nidich played h3 course still hoping for this queen f3 to g2 uh, and now queen to g4 not allowing queen to f3 okay for the moment uh corona's queen is stuck there guarding the f3 square but he does have two connected pass pawns and he will definitely start pushing them uh rook to d3 going after the b3 pawn b4 by caruana and now rook to b3 uh, and here caruana said okay you're free to go for my pawn i'm just gonna eliminate this pawn and you no longer have any sort of an attack going on and he, rightfully he does so because rook captures is impossible due to bishop d6 uh just uh, winning the exchange here uh so after queen captures on h3 uh we have rook to a8 and now comes b5 uh just pushing that pawn and uh it was actually in this position on move 33 uh, that Arkady Nidic resigned the game. He no longer has any counterplay. Uh, he no longer has uh, an attack. And uh, there's really not all that much to do here. Uh, if you go for rook captures on a4, uh, which is possible, uh, it simply doesn't work. Because here, uh, well, it's a, it's a nice little tactic. Feel, feel free to pause the video and try to see why you cannot capture on a4. Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds as it is a very nice Sunday. It's sunny outside, you know, do do enjoy the position. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, you are an excellent, uh, you know, creator of nasty discoveries. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, just bishop e5. Of course, now you see that the queen controls the entire h file. Uh, black queen is under attack, and whatever you do, rook to c8 will be will be a deadly move. Uh, so whatever you do, uh, either you will grab the bishop and you will receive check, uh, which is also checkmate, as the king has nowhere to go. Uh, or you might try queen to d8. Yes, you're preventing rook from reaching this uh, c8 square, but not just bishop captures or rook captures. It doesn't really matter. You can just capture, 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 and now you are up a piece. You still have your pass pawn. It's a completely winning endgame for white. So Nidich realized this, and after this b5 by Caruana, he simply resigned the game. Uh, an excellent victory for Caruana, and uh, he does, uh, as he is the winner of the Grand Kid Chess Classic 2018, he's still trying to catch up to Magnus. We do have the standings here. Uh, Carlsen, after yet another victory, he's 5.5 out of 7. Uh, then Caruana in second place with 4.5. Uh, then Peter Swidler and Maxim Vachel Le Grau with 4. With 3.5, we have Vishwanathan Anand, Arkady Nidic, and Levon Aronian. With 2.5, uh, Francisco Valle uh, Valleo Pons. Uh, and also, uh, 
in last place with two points, Georg Meyer and Vincent Keimer. Uh, Keimer, after winning his game against Georg Meyer, uh, he also drew against Levon Aryan, and in this round he drew against Peter Swidler. So it seems that those uh, tough rounds in the beginning uh, against uh, Carlsen, Caruana, Anna, and the Nidic really paid off, as now Vincent seems unstoppable. So we'll see. Two more rounds to go. What will Vincent do? Will be very interesting to see. Uh, I would like to thank Javier Victoria, Lucas Novak, Harry Potter, uh, Jarl Tejan, and Aniket Modi for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, hopefully with some more interesting content. And uh, for the end of this video, let's just enjoy uh, one more time this very soothing uh, footage of Caruana chilling in front of some fruits and booze. So there we have it. Once again, thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your Sunday.